Hi and welcome back to Holistic Developer Channel. I hope you're doing fine. In today's video I want to talk with you about what's next. So the majority of you who are following this channel, Holistic Developer Channel, you know that I just recently graduated from a coding bootcamp and naturally probably the majority of you already know what's next and some maybe are wondering what is next. So I just want to make clear what is the next step and the most logical step is to prep and apply for jobs, for software engineering jobs. So how I'm planning to do that, what is next, that's what is this video about. And if that is something that is not, <laughs> that brings your interest and joy <laughs> to watch, feel free to skip this video and watch something else. So with that taking out of <laughs> the way, um, what am I planning to do next, right? I'm going to the most logical step is to do interviews, to apply for interviews. But if you are in the tech field, you probably know or experienced yourself this that to get a job in software engineering, you first have to pass a coding interview. And they are not always the easiest part in the interview. Uh, there are a lot of data structures and algorithms that you have to know in order to pass a coding interview, to crack the coding interview as there is this uh, expression or saying in the industry. So probably some people might just go ahead and apply for jobs and go and do the interviews. Probably a while ago I would have done the same thing, just I'll wing it because I've been working as a software developer, like what can be asked, right? Uh, but that's not the approach I'm going to do next. Uh, for me, the most logical thing is to actually prepare for a coding interview, to pass a coding interview. And to be honest, to be completely transparent, I've been doing many, many coding interviews. I've been interviewed by small companies, small size companies like startups, middle level tech companies, and even giant tech companies such as Facebook, Amazon, Google, and even Microsoft. And if I were to think about which ones did I actually got to the point of on-site uh, technical interviews, uh, they were Facebook, Amazon, and Google. I did get those on-site uh, interviews, but I never had an on-site interview with Microsoft. With even all of that, um, there's this thing that <laughs> <laughs> it's happening to me and I'm sure a lot of people are in the same situation, they're facing the same thing, is that I am terrified of interviews. I actually have um, interview phobia, even though I've done many, many interviews already. And regardless of um, how I'm trying to prepare, what mindset, problems or exercises I'm doing, I'm anyways trying and not to fall in this phobia thing, but it follows me anyways. It doesn't matter how prepared I am. I always, when I am on on site, on interview, or not necessarily virtual interviews as well, when I get a question, I lose my uh, concentration. I cannot gather my ideas into well-formed thoughts. And yeah, it's just, honestly, I'm not a good representation of what I'm capable or what can I do. So the most logical thing for me is actually to spend some time and practice, get into that mindset of solving these problems, doing mock interviews, solving problems like technical problems, coding problems like lead code, algorithms, like there are a lot of services currently that exist. Happily, for software engineers, there are so many great resources that can assist a programmer to prepare and pass a coding interview. There are great books such as Cracking the Coding Interview, Elements of Programming, or elements of technical interviews, I believe it's called. Then there are forums, there are blogs, there are articles, there are YouTube channels, there are services such as Lead Code or Algo Expert. That's not a problem. There are plenty, plenty full of resources. One thing is that there's not enough time. 
you might be currently working and trying to find another job. Or maybe you're not working, but you have a family and kids that need your attention and prepping for an interview, uh, it's time consuming. So what can you do to prepare for a coding interview? How to crack a technical interview uh, with as little time as possible? So my situation is that I'm currently not working, but I do have a family and I do have a child who I want to spend time with and my time that I have, I'll have to balance it out somehow to be able to prepare for an interview, to get past my phobia, get past the uncertainty of what kind of question I may be asked and also being able to solve these algorithms that as a software developer, a professional, <laughs> a software engineer, um, you don't do on a daily basis, let's face it. I don't remember when it was the last time I had to do um, 2D uh, array at work, but that's besides the point. I don't know if you can tell, but even talking about interviews, I'm being nervous and losing my train of thoughts and so on, but I need to stop with the drama. Um, okay, so getting back to the point, I'm planning to create a calendar and probably I'll call it something cheesy like creating, <laughs> cracking technical interview schedule or something like that. And what will that schedule look like? It will be probably somewhere from eight to 12 tasks that I want to do on a weekly basis. And just to give an idea of what those tasks might be, those will be solving data structures and algorithm problems. Um, I might use services such as lead code, hacker rank, why not algo expert? <laughs> um, also, another thing that I'm planning to do, a different task will be technical coding interviews. And for that, I will use uh, GitHub repositories, there are a lot of them. There are um, JavaScript trivia questions that you can find online. Also, I'm planning to revisit the curriculum and use other articles that uh, will help me with solving the questions like, what is a closure? Obviously, I know what is a closure in JavaScript, but when you are in, in an interview setting and one thing is to know that <laughs> that uh, thing and, and do it in practice. And another thing is to put it into words and explain it to a different human being in, in a way that it makes sense, if that makes sense. So practicing those kind of skills of actually verbalizing the idea, not just having it in, in my mind. The next thing that I'm planning to do is obviously read technical books and currently I'm continuing to read Pragmat Pro Pragmatic Programmer, it's a great book. I'm about half and halfway into that book. It's a great book. Probably also will continue and read um, Domain Driven Development, um, working with Legacy Code and many other books related to the tech industry to continue developing and crafting the art and also probably pick up some good practices in software engineering, continue polishing the skill, if that makes sense. Next, I also want to focus on working on my current projects, polishing them up and also probably work on other projects, actually coding, not just solving algorithms because there are kind of two different things. Um, also, I'm planning to attend tech meetups, interviews probably, <laughs> and they don't count in this case, this kind of interviews, but um, I'm talking about conferences, I'm talking about webinars and stuff like that. Obviously, I also am planning to do whiteboarding, um, planning to do mock-up interviews, and obviously the last but not the least is to apply for jobs because if, well, even though you maybe i'm not prepared and don't feel ready to do an interview yet um, applying for jobs it's important to do even if you're not ready yet it's kind of something that grounds you and makes you continue with the process to preparing for them at least that's what it's, <laughs> it's in my mind. Obviously, I also want to do coaching and um, work on my resume, cover letter, letter, my online presence, like uh, updating my LinkedIn profile, making sure that it's up to date and stuff like that. So um, those kind of things. And obviously also um, 
do some networking, trying to reach out to my network, see what they are, um, what they're doing, to keep in touch, to stay connected. So those are kind of the eight to 12 things that I'm planning to do to prepare for a coding interview, to get into mindset, to get, to feel ready um, emotionally, to feel ready technically, <laughs> and to feel ready even to actually have a few practiced um, mock-up interviews. As you can see, those are the things that I'm planning to do to prepare for uh, coding interviews. And there are a lot of things and they are not set in stones. They're probably something that I already <laughs> missed and I'm not seeing it obvious yet. But as the weeks go, as the time goes, as I'm preparing, I will adjust and see what do I need to spend more time on? What do I need to um, do less? Like kind of we are probably on a weekly basis do a retrospective and see what needs to be changed, what needs to be added and what I'm continuing to do well, right? So um, that's what is going on. That's what I'm planning to do. And it's a lot of stuff that aren't happening to, to prepare for a coding interview. And somebody actually mentioned that to get a job as a software developer, the job searching process, it's a job in itself. It's like a full-time job. It takes you somewhere of 40 hours weekly to prepare for coding interviews. So yeah, even though I'm not actively working, I'm still working, <laughs> let's say that I'll be working to prepare for my next job. And that's what I'm focusing right now. And that's uh, what is next, if that is what you were looking forward to hear in this video. A side note to answer one of your requests, you asked me to create a video where I will share what was my experience during my bootcamp, what did I learn, what projects did I do and actually share the projects kind of show what I actually created. That's a good uh, suggestion and thank you for as actually requesting it. I'm planning to do that uh, as soon as my projects are ready because this actually even today I'm working on polishing some of my pro of my projects to make sure that the weird user experience issues are fixed, the bugs are fixed and it's deployed and it's working as expected. So as soon as that is presentable, <laughs> I will have a video uploaded uh, about that. Thank you for watching this video until the end. It means a lot to me. And if you found this video useful or inspirational or motivational or hilarious, I don't know, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'm uh, entertaining you somehow. Um, make sure to like it and uh, leave a comment. And you can leave a request if you want to see a new video or you want to request a live stream or something. I don't know. Make sure to leave it in the comments um, down below this video. And I make sure to read every single comment. Um, and I appreciate all of them, all the comments. They are. Um, making a lot of uh, sense um, when I'm creating videos. I don't feel like I'm talking to myself, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah. Next video, I'm planning to do a detailed schedule of what my week might look preparing for an interview. And if you're interested watching that, make sure that you're subscribed and your notification bell is on so you're not missing that next video. As always, I'm wishing you to have fun, to uh, stay healthy, health, stay sane, and have a good time. Bye-bye.